Hi, I'm Dr. Barry Duncan, and this is the fifth of seven videos about the Partners for Change Outcome Management System, or PCOMS, and why you should consider using it in your practice or agency. This video discusses how PCOMS enhances the factors related to success, the so-called but not so common, common factors. Here is Michael Lampert's historical rendition of those factors where 40% of outcome variance is accounted for by client or extra therapeutic factors, now called client life factors. This is everything about the client that has nothing to do with us, their resources, strengths, capabilities, relational supports, community connection, religious affiliation, everything about them that they walk in the room with. Next are the relationship variables accounting for 30% of outcome variance. These are the Rogerian variables, the alliance variables, the things that clients remember the most about their work for, with us. In fact, in exit polls, clients typically will reflect the things they remember are that therapists listened to them and took them seriously and gave them hope. And speaking of hope, placebo hope and expectancy is the next most important variable at 15% of outcome variance. Jerome Frank said it best, when clients see us, they are demoralized by their problem. In fact, they, living, they think that they're living out a sentence of misery in their life, and every day will be as miserable as today. But we, in his words, remoralize them, or in other words, we give them the hope that that's not true. And in fact, Jerome Frank believed that hope was the final common pathway to all change. And then finally, coming up last, or I guess tied for last, models and techniques count for about 15% of the variance of change. Don't interpret this to mean that model and techniques aren't important. Of course they are. They provide an explanation for the client's difficulties and a way to solve those difficulties. They also provide a structure and focus to the work. It's just that they're not as impactful on outcome as many have led us to believe and that client and relationship variables are far more important. In fact, the client is the heart and the relationship or alliance is the soul of change, hence the name of the popular Common Factors book. Now here is a more accurate rendition of those variables gleaned from meta-analysis. And the first way to understand this is to look at the big yellow ball here. And that's the amount of variance attributable to client life factors. Of course, this includes unexplained and error variants, but even a casual look shows that 86% of the variance of change is attributable to what clients walk in the door with. And then that pale blue circle is the 14% of the variance attributable to what we do with folks or the treatment or therapy that we're providing. The thing that Michael Lampert left out of his rendition of the common factors was you. That's right. Therapist effects account for most of the variance of any treatment being delivered. Should it be any surprise to us that the human beings involved in the endeavor, that the client and the therapist and their relationship, their alliance, account for the lion's share of all the variance of change in psychotherapy? If you believe that client factors account for 86% of the variance, what does that mean? Well, it certainly would mean that you would privilege what the client brings, their experience of their lives, and try to rally their many resources and resiliencies to the cause of change. But is this what we do? Well, I'm here to tell you that you're probably going to find out as you go out there that you're not going to amount to jack squats. No, it's not what we do. We rely on these killer Ds of client diminishment, as I call them, dysfunction, disorder, disease, disability, deficit, damage. The ironic part is none of these ways of looking at people has ever been related to outcome. And of course you know that the DSM or diagnostic views suffer horribly in terms of their reliability and validity. And as a field, we just need to and move on to better ways of looking at clients that more accurately reflect the amount of variance that they account for. And in fact, clients are the lions of change. They account for the majority of outcome variance. And I've always loved this African proverb, until lions have their historians, tales of hunting will always glorify the hunter. And I hate to tell you, but we are the hunters in this proverb. We ride in our white horse of theoretical purity, we brandish our sword of evidence-based treatments, and we slay the psychic dragons that terrorize our clients. I'm ready for that story to go out of print, because clients are the actual heroes and heroines of their own story of change. And in fact, that's what PCOMS brings to the table. 
It makes consumers the historians of their own changes. Their view of their progress is what we're measuring and tracking. And we are partnering with clients, the most potent part of change in this endeavor to monitor outcome. Now let's move on to the soul of change. The client is the heart, the soul is the therapeutic alliance. And just to remind you what that means, it has three components. It's the relational bond, the client's view of your empathy, your authenticity, and your unconditional positive regard. And then there's more cognitive components, the agreement with the client about not only the goals of the work, but how we're going to accomplish the work. It accounts to seven times the amount of variance as model of technique, and it accounts for most of the differences between and among therapists. So in other words, those therapists that get stronger alliances across more clients get better Surely outcomes. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Couldn't be more serious about this. Over a thousand independent studies show the relationship between a strong alliance and a positive outcome. Regardless of theoretical orientation, regardless of model and technique used, regardless of modality of the therapy, it still is predictive. But it's perpetually minimized in difficulty and importance. It gets such little press. It's amazing to me in many ways, and maybe my biggest irk with the field is seen as the anesthesia before surgery. We dumb the client down with our Rogerian reflections and then we stick the intervention to them when they're half asleep. I'm really ready for that to go out of print too because you can make a much stronger case that the alliance is the therapy so it deserves far more respect. And I invoke Aretha to help me make that point. And of course that's what the SRS is all about in PCOMs, is monitoring, measuring the alliance, and soliciting client feedback about how the service is going for them. Not leaving it to chance, giving it the respect it deserves. PCOMs tailor services to client expectation, preferences, and cultural worldview. Back to this figure of the different common factors, sometimes I call it the hallucinogenic figure, you see that there are feedback effects. Feedback is the tie that binds all the factors together and overlaps with them. Soliciting feedback engages the most potent source of outcome, clients in monitoring outcome, and thereby heightens hope, fits clients' preferences, maximizes the alliance, and is itself a core feature of change. To read more about the common factors, go to betteroutcomesnow.com, go over to Resources, click on Articles and Handouts, Scroll down a bit and you'll see Common Factors and Psychotherapy, the Applying Outcome Research article, the Heart and Soul of Change article, and one that discusses the common factors in many of the ways that I did in the webinar today, The Person of the Therapist. And while you're there, check out the new PCOMS manual for everything PCOMS.